In this episode, we are going to talk about the parallel axis theorem and what does it say? How is it going to help us to find the moment of inertia for composites and for plane figures? So let's dive deep into that. The parallel axis theorem. Here we are talking about parallel axis. So definitely it should come in mind some axis that we are talking about and they have to be parallel to each other. Are we okay? So once we know that, many we are expecting two or more axes. Are we okay? Two or more axes to play a role in the parallel axis theory. How then do we go by this? Here, this relates the moment of inertia with respect to the centroidal axis. So always one of the axes is known, which is the centroidal axis. The axis passing through the center of the figure. And we've also known how to locate the centroidal axis. Once you find the point X and Y, you can now locate your centroidal axis. So with a parallel axis, one, our reference is going to be with respect to the centroidal axis, which we know how to locate, and with respect to any other parallel axis. The any other parallel axis would be the axis, the question will be asking us to find the moment of inertia with respect to. Are you okay? So with the centroid, you can always find it, and another axis will be given to you to find the moment of inertia about that axis. Let's look at the figure below. So we have our axis Y. Please pay attention. Y, we have the axis X here. And this is the figure. So by analysis, this is an irregular shape. And through experiment, we were able to find the center of this figure by some experiments. So we saw that this is the center, the X as a center for the irregular shape. And we saw that this is the Y center for the irregular shape. So since the parallel axis theorem is always with reference to the centroidal axis, always, always with respect to the centroidal axis, first you have to locate the center of the figure. We have our centroidal axis X and this is our Y. All right, so parallel, we will check which axis again is parallel to this centroidal axis that we've located. With the X, this axis, let's call this X1, X1. X1 is parallel to the axis X. Can we see that? And looking at, let's call this Y1. And this is YC. The axis Y1 is parallel to the centroidal axis YC. Is that also true? Okay, meaning with the parallel axis theorem, once we know the center axis for the X, and we have another reference axis X1, we can find the moment of inertia for the X, about, or about the X. And we can also have the moment of inertia about the y since we know the y center axis and another reference parallel axis. So how do we do this? There is a formula that relates the axis and this is how it goes. If a figure is given and we know the x center axis, that's the centroidal axis, and any other x reference axis is given and the question is asking us to find the moment of inertia about the axis this is how we do it first we know our center and we are finding the moment of inertia with respect to the x axis so this is what we do we will now find the moment of inertia of the figure Remember, in the previous episode, we talked about how to find the moment of inertia of various shapes. So if it is a rectangle like this, and we have 
our x we know how to find its i x are we okay if it is a square we also know how to find it i x that will be b4 on 12 and this for the rectangle will be what b h cube on 12. so first the i x which is the moment of inertia that we are going to find using the parallel axis theorem is going to be the i x c for the plane figure we already know the shape for this is an irregular shape we don't know but in real questions we are they is going to be a regular shape so we will use the formula we know for those regular shape plus the area of that regular shape multiplying the distance between the centroidal axis and that other reference axis it's very simple square so the square of that distance so this ix is the overall moment of inertia of the figure using parallel axis theorem and the ixc mm -hmm. is the original or the individual ix or the moment of inertia for the figure plus the area of the figure and the distance between the center axis and the other reference axis so let's look at this for this shape we are going to apply the parallel axis theory to find so our ix is going to be this is an irregular shape we don't know the formula yet so we will just represent it by the individual ixc plus we can also find the area of that the area and the distance between the center axis this is the center axis and the reference is this x axis also so the distance between them is d1 and that distance will be d1 square are we okay what about finding it about the y so that is i y is equal to we know that for each shape we have its own i y c2 are we okay or i y to distinguish this from that that's why we are bringing the c about the center or the central that axis plus the area so what is the distance between the center y and the reference y looking at this distance it is giving us d2 so the square of d2 and this formula will hold it's not difficult just get the formula for the parallel axis theorem the individual isc for the figure plus the area of the figure and the distance between the centroidal axis and the other reference axis and you are able to do that are we okay so let's again look at this shape and try to get more meaning from that so with this from experiment this is an irregular shape again and we saw that this is the center axis so we call it ic or xc the center x are you okay this is the center axis and there are two other reference axis parallel to this that's the central axis so what we saw is that always the reference should be between the center axis and any other axis so it cannot be between this xs and this zz it won't be possible because none of them is a center axis but it can be between the center axis and this x and the center axis and the z are we okay all right so we can take any of them so let's find the moment of inertia using the parallel axis theorem about this xs so that's i about this x let's call it xx is equal to the individual i for the figure which is let's say the ixc for the figure plus the area of the figure which is a and the distance between the center axis and that reference axis is k k2 so k2 
that distance square. So this is the moment of inertia using the parallel axis theorem with respect to this x axis. Let's look at the z axis. It is going to be the i about the z axis. So this is going to be the individual i x c for the figure plus the area of the figure and the distance between the two axes. So this is k1 square and we are okay. So let's assume this is the y centroidal axis. So I'll call it yc, I'll call it yc. And let's put another reference axis here. Say y, say y or y1 by y1. And let's call the distance between the axis as m. Are we okay? So with this, the i about this y axis or y1 axis is going to be the iyc for the figure plus the area of the figure multiplying the distance between the two axis the distance square and we will get that so let me place another axis here call f axis so therefore the moment of inertia about the f axis using the parallel axis theorem is going to be since they are all perpendicular or parallel to the y we are going to use the i y c for the plane figure plus this iyc that we are talking about and the ixc is what we discussed in the previous video for each of the shapes so for each shape it has its ixc and its iy do we remember so plus the area let's call this distance n and that will be n squared for that it's quite simple so what we are saying is assuming we want to add this ixs and this iz or let's say we are going to subtract iz then it is going to be how do we do that we want to add this to that so we can say that this is similar to that so they will cancel out leaving a this minus that it's also possible we do it this way are we okay so this is all about the parallel axis theorem for simple shapes are we okay you just apply it with respect to the centroidal axis so in a situation where the are not locating the centroidal axis for you and in most question the question will come like find the moment of inertia about the other reference axis for that they will give it to you but the centroidal axis may not be given you have to go through the initial stage for locating the center of the figure and drawing your axis through the center then you use the analysis for the other formula are we okay?